This is an Itch Your Break production, so sit back and take a break. Welcome to Itch Your Break. Hi, I'm Jonathan Mertz, and coming up in a few moments, we're going to be talking to a life coach and a relationship coach. But here's the really cool thing. You all have helped me in this episode, and I'm going to be asking her some of the questions that you asked to be asked and covered. And it's coming up next here on Itch Your Break. Subscribe to the Itch Your Break podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible, YouTube, and iHeartRadio. Welcome back to Itch Your Break. Hi, I'm Jonathan Mertz. And this is a show that we're going to be talking a lot about relationships, especially those that are toxic. And... I don't know about you, but you've always had some of those friendships that seem to fall apart. You've seen some of those friendships that should have been gone away with. And you have some of those relationships you see people with. with why are you dating them? Why are you with the with that person? And sometimes those things kind of boggle your mind. So it got me thinking, why is this the case? And why are we in these situations? So I reached out. I started asking questions. And lo and behold, Coach Amy Schoen has graced herself with us today. And thank you so much, Amy, for for coming on the show. Oh, thanks, Jonathan, for having me. And and for those that don't know, she is a life and relationship coach. And before we get actually talking into my main topic today, I want to give you a chance to kind of let people know your background, where you're from, and how you became this life coach and relationship coach. Well, I was just doing my thing, you know, living my life, Uh, got married at 25 um, to someone from college, Um, didn't really know, you know, too much back then, and I found myself divorced in my mid-30s and without a family, and that was like the heartbreak of my life, and so I became, and I didn't understand why. And so I had to do a lot of self-reflection and I actually hired a coach and I had a therapist at one time and did some work on myself, figuring what I really want out of life and what's important to me. And, um, and then when I was 41, I met my, my husband, Alan, and we got married. I was 42. So, um, I'm call myself the poster child for motivated to marry, which is my website. Um, and I, you know, I like to help people who are looking for serious, committed relationships, but all sorts of relationships come up in the conversation when I'm coaching. And I actually went and got certified as a professional life coach. And then I took some more training um, in order to be a professional coach with the ICF. You have to have a lot of training hours and c- keep up your certification with more training. And so I went to like, it's called the Center for the Right Relationship. And I learned about how to do relationship coaching and more, more about it and really kind of delve into that. And it's been my focus for um, 18 years now. That is fascinating. And, you know, it's so interesting. I've been on your website already and I got to look and and read over some of the articles and things that, that you were in. But one of the things that stood out to me is the quote that was from the Wall Street Journal article. And it says that relationships only last when your goals are aligned. So what what does that actually mean? Well, you have to be going in the same direction and wanting the same things. And I see that, you know, people do connect with each other, this chemistry, we meet each other at a party or through friends or whatever we, online, you see a picture of someone you're attracted to. And then you find out your goals are not the same. And one person wants to have children, one doesn't want children, one had their children, or in an older age group, one wants to move to a certain place, one doesn't want to move, one wants to keep working, the other one wants to retire. You know, so I do know relationships that were good relationships and they just didn't last because the goals were misaligned. And people had to make some decisions and, and they wanted partners who had the same goals. And, and, and so that's like the first thing that has to line up in any relationship. Now, I know it may be a little sensitive here, but is that similar to what happened in your first relationship? Um, yes and no. 
let's just say, um, you know, we're talking about toxic relationships. Yeah. Um, just say our, 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 what I thought we wanted the same things and actually you're right. We did not end up wanting the same things in the same direction. And yet one has to be honest with themselves and know themselves. And I think, you know, um, in, you know, I think he just wasn't aware of what he really wanted. And I think the chemistry and, you know, we did get along really well, you know, even though we also did not share and we'll get into values, our values were really kind of misaligned also. Um, you know, we were in the same place, same we met in college, you know, and we, there was really a lot of chemistry there. And, um, you know, I think at the time I was a good partner for him and he was a good partner for me. And, and I think, you know, I didn't um, plan on leaving the marriage. It actually wasn't my choice, but um, it was something that um, he made some decisions that weren't um, joint decisions. Let's just say he decided to take a job out of, and I really had no choice in the matter. He took a job that was out of my geographic area and he kind of said, so he, he's told me what I wanted to hear, but I don't think he really was honest with himself and honest with me in, in the end. And so there were things that happened that were unfortunate and I'm not going to get into my dirty past, right, but, right. um, you know, I kind of was bamboozled and, um, and I just knew it just wasn't, you know, going to move forward and, and we didn't have children. And so I actually wanted children. And, and then he said, told me at that time, I don't want kids. And, I don't know, you know, it just, it just, even, even with that, there were things that, that I need to be with someone I can trust and who's honest with me. And so those values were really stepped on. And so, um, I had to leave the marriage. I didn't have a choice. Mm. Wow. So here's a follow-up question and it's just out of curiosity. Um, do people actually change? I mean, is it, or is it, or they always stay the same mentally? Um, do people change? I think you are who you are. What you present to the world may change. Um, your, um, what's important to you in terms of what you're going to put your priorities in may change. And, um, yeah, some people change their mind and say, this is not for me. Um, Again, it goes down to your values. I mean, some people have really a strong loyalty. Like if I make a commitment, I'm going to keep a commitment. And other people um, are like, okay, this is not working for me anymore. I'm, I'm gone. This is, gotcha. this is, you know. Gotcha. It just depends well, on, on how your, your, um, your makeup. No, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Um, I would, if you don't mind, I'd like to, to, uh, take a, a few seconds and, or actually a few minutes actually, and, and kind of address some questions from some of my listeners, if you don't mind. Okay. Okay. So this first one's from Ashley Raymer Brown and she writes, we have heard all about toxic marriages. Thanks to Johnny and Amber and not being snarky. I'm genuinely glad this has been brought out, but what are the signs of toxic friendships and how can we gracefully extract ourselves? Well, I'm all about values and helping my clients understand their values. And when something, when we talk about that, that means something that's important to you that's stepped on. So there's something about respect and trust. And so what's toxic? Toxic is, um, I think, when you don't feel good about yourself, mm -hmm. when you get up and, and, and you have a pit in your stomach or you're afraid to bring up something to your partner because you're afraid they may leave or afraid they may hit you or um, there's fear. Um, toxic is somebody who um, you can't have a, a open and honest dialogue with them and share your true feelings perhaps. Um, or you try to do something and they always put you down because you know that makes them feel powerful. And so there are people, you know, we go into the narcissist, the gaslighting, um, the uh, controlling mm -hmm. behaviors. And I mean, 
I've always been thin my whole life, you know, I, I you know, um, and so I might have been like 100, 105 pounds. And, and my ex told me I was fat and he was looking for excuses to put me down. Or he would, you know, say nasty, you know, if someone's going to criticize you and say nasty things, that's toxic. Mm -hmm. If you're unhappy about something, then there's a way of bringing it up in, in a way that's respectful and, and asking for um, support or understanding or, okay, this is, I need to talk to you about something. Um, you know, you have to talk about, I, I had a, one of my, my coaches, counselors, talked about the butts on the beach. So let's say you say you have a pre pristine beach and then you see a cigarette butt. You know, they're like, ew, cigarette butts. So you just l ruin the whole experience. Well, there are butts in every relationship, and we have to speak of them. And you have to be able to bring it up in a way that both partners are want willing to work on the relationship and hear each other and respect each other's points of view. When there's no respect, when there's criticism, when there's... Um, you know, John Gottman talks about the four horsemen in a relationship, defensiveness, and one, the, the worst one is stonewalling, where they just ignore you completely. Um, so, you know, there, there are ways that, that are really toxic, you know, for, for somebody. So what's toxic, right? Let's, let's mm -hmm. define that. And that's um, yeah, anything that's toxic is something that is not good for us and we can't live with. I mean, I don't know how you define toxic. I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's something that can destroy you. Okay. And it does. It just destroys your will. It destroys your self-confidence. It destroys your, 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 you know, people come and, and, and lose. They, they forgot how to make decisions for themselves. And they don't feel confident in their decisions. Yeah. But, but really understanding people who are, um, how can you say, resilient, people who have a good sense of themselves, you know, they have a good, they know, say, this is what's important to me. This is, you know, most people won't put up with that kind of behavior for very long, being put down. It's, it can be considered abusive. What are the traits of people being narcissistic? Is it developed? Is it nurtured? Is it something that's genetic? Um, so I'm going to say I don't have the background to really speak of that. Okay. And perhaps maybe that's another conversation and, and, and you, with a therapist. So I'm a coach. And coach, right. we look at our clients as being um, as creative, resourceful, and whole, we look at people at being able to find solutions. And um, so when, when there is a situation that does require therapy um, as a coach, we are, um, we recommend, you know, them to see, seek therapy. There's always a coaching way. So the coaching way is really about understanding your values and what's important to you and what's being stepped on and so that they can see what's happening and then there's a choice and coaching is all about making choices and knowing that you have a choice when somebody does not see that they have a choice that's more of a therapy situation where a person sees that okay i can choose this or choose this or choose that and maybe they just choose to stay in the situation because there's children or something. Or maybe they have to leave because there's children. You know, so knowing you're at choice and you can be empowered to make changes is a coaching kind of thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. And that makes sense. And I, I knew you were a like licensed therapist, but I, I didn't know if you had done some research or not on that part. Um, I do take, I did take a little class about therapy in my coaching conference recently. Um, they did have somebody come and say, this is therapy. This is the therapy models. You know, I got a quick cliff notes version of it. Um, mm -hmm. but it is something that I'm always kind of bouncing against because I am in the relationship world and my clients, some of them do go have, have therapists and they go to therapy, but they also like the coaching approach, which is a little more proactive and a little bit more, 
um, moving forward instead of just dwelling, you know. And, and, and I know in therapy they want people to move forward. And so there's different kinds of therapies. So, you know, there is overlap and some of my training has overlapped in, in, and there are tools and strategies we can use in our coaching toolbox that help our clients no matter where they are. All right. I'm going to ask another question here from another one of my listeners. And this comes from Ricky Woods. And he asked, why do guys say they love and care for you and then ghost you like they've never met you? Yeah. Why do they? You, <laughs> I don't know. I've never, I don't know. Like yeah. So I think what happens is they're in love with being in love. I see these guys and I work with men and women. So a guy would be attracted to somebody and oh, she's the one for me. And, you know, they go, some people just like jump in, you know, you, you see a pool of water, right? Excuse me. Right. <clears throat> and, and you're like, oh, water. Some people just jump in. And other people have to take their time and one step at a time. So these people jump in, but then they learn something about this person and the uh-ohs occur. Uh-oh, I didn't know this. And uh-oh, I didn't know that. And so then they're like, oh, this is not going to work. And I wish people would take more time and, and up front and, and, and get to know someone before they jump in. Now, I do know people who've been smitten with each other right up the bat right off the bat and, and it worked out. But I think, you know, as an adult and, and dating as an adult, and most of my clients are over 30, you know, we want to make sure we may, we pick the right person. And so there is a little bit of taking the time to get to know somebody. I would totally agree with that 100%. And, and, and you do see some of these people who seem to just be stuck in that puppy love phase. And when it kind of dies out, they just move on. And, you know, that is, uh, in my thing, in my opinion, sometimes they don't know really what they want, and is is what my opinion would be on that. What um, are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it depends on where they are. So people are just, you know, are they like little, you know, they're just jumping from one one relationship to another, and other people are hanging back and don't do anything because they're afraid of making mistakes. That's the, gotcha. that's the two sides of the spectrum. I got you. So let's let's change gears just a little bit and let's kind of get on to to what you do, okay? Because we know where these toxic relationships are. We we kind of covered that. We've kind of covered, you know, some of these questions. But what does a life coach do in these situations? What do they, you know, what do you do with your each individual client? How do you approach them? And and I know everybody's going to be a little different, but how do you approach them and set them up for success? Well, I really want, you know, my clients to really, I take a holistic approach and really look at what they want for their life first. What are their goals? What do they want for their lives? What do they want to accomplish? Where do they want to be? And what's important to them? And then, so we do a deep, um, we do it uh, like a called a um, uh, ideal life, ideal relationship exercise. And then from there, and we can pull out people's values from that. And then I also do another deep, what I call deep clarification of your values, where I ask a series of questions and we pull out what's important. And you get a real sense of something. And you know, what's interesting, people have themes in their lives and certain things bubble up to the surface. And I'm thinking of a young woman I'm working right with, now, with her and having a supportive partner, somebody who can support her in good times and bad is really important. And she's in a relationship trying to decide whether she wants to stick with this relationship. And, you know, this guy's giving her a little bit, like enough to keep her going, but not the whole enchilada. And so I think in the long run, it's not going to work out because, you know, she's not getting her needs met. And when you feel needy in a relationship, that's a sign. You really need to take a look and say, what's not working here? It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It means that person is incapable or not able to give you what you need. Now, sometimes you can kind of talk to someone and they're clueless and they're like, oh, I didn't know you needed that. And we all have things that we're good at in relationships and things we're not. And I don't know if you've ever heard about the five love languages and things like that, but we need people to express love in a certain way to feel loved. And that person may not be expressing it in a way that you need. And so there's a gap 
there. And so some people kind of can change themselves to cover that gap, or sometimes you have to ask your partner to kind of change a little to cover that gap. But the issue is people go back to being who they really are. So I really look at relationships about fit. Is this a good fit? Is this a good person? Is this somebody you want to spend, you know, the rest of your life with? Um, and, and that's really what I do as a coach is help my clients make better decisions for themselves and feel good about those decisions. The other thing I do is I help people see what they have to offer to a relationship instead of what they don't have. And so we, a lot of us at this certain age, and after we've had experiences and we may be rejected or whatever, been through un unfortunate situations, we may not feel good about ourselves. So it's my job as a coach to have people really look, you know, in the mirror and say, hey, this is what you're really terrific about you. And this is people from all shapes and sizes, all ethnicities. You know, I mean, I had a 30 something year old woman who, of course she was, you know, a little overweight, but you know, she was warm and wonderful and I helped her see what she had to offer to a relationship. She got online, she met this great guy, they're now married with a family, you know, so we sometimes are not our best advocates and we're sometimes not our best selves. Now, in terms of other relationships, we get to decide who we want to hang out with, who do we want to be with our friends. So I remember when I was dating, you know, you kind of are friends with people. I'm an extrovert. I like to be able to do things and be included. So I was hanging out with people who were not really serving me. They really weren't that nice. And they were very catty women. And, um, and I realized I was working with a coach that I really wanted to be around supportive people. People who, you know, were supporting my goals. I was my goal to meet someone, get married. A lot of the women would say, why are you bothering? Men are just such pain in butt. You know, they had given up. And so I had to kind of literally divorce myself from a group of women friends. And I pulled back. And not that, you know, if I saw them at, at another event or group, I would be friendly and nice to these people. But I didn't go out of my way. And I really developed relationships and friendships that were supportive and sustaining. And the same thing about relationships with, with men or, or your, you know, anyone who you're going to partner with. It's about finding somebody that makes you feel good about yourself. And I know you touched a little bit on this, but I have a friend who has had numerous relationships. He's also... Uh, you know, very manic depressant. He, you know, he feels unworthy and every relationship he's ever had just kind of ended on a sour note. How do you coach somebody that's in that type of mindset and, and teach them that there are people out there uh, for them that will benefit them? Well, first of all, they have to be open to coaching and they have to be open to doing that self work and saying, I want something better for myself and seek help. So if somebody's at my doorstep seeking help, then basically you really get to see who they are and what they have to offer. And then you get to see, well, how are you in relationship? Or who are you choosing? So I also do an exercise called Relationship Roadblocks where we look at your past relationships and find out, well, why did they not go forward? What was it about these relationships that wasn't working for you or the other person? And so you kind of do a little scan back and sometimes there's no trend at all. And sometimes it's like one of my clients said, oh my, and she had been married four times, no, three times, three times. And she said, oh my God, I'm doing the same thing over and over. And she's been in therapy over again. And I'm saying, okay, well, we're not doing that again, right? <laughs> and I've empowered, empowered her. She's making much better decisions. She hasn't found the man of her dreams yet, but she's meeting really great quality guys and she's making better choices for herself. And she's choosing, she is now really clear about what she will accept in a relationship and what she won't. That's really cool. And and thank you for, for putting that in perspective uh, because you know it, sometimes people just don't know where to go and how they feel, so thank you. Yeah, so there are people out here who can help and, you know, there's different levels, you know, there's, and, and, 
it's really about saying, okay, you know, we all know the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and getting the same results and, and being, you know, it's like, what do you want to do that's different? And I realized I had made some bad choices in my life. And I actually went to a therapist to help me get over the pain of my, of my divorce and my marriage. And then I found a coach because I was ready to move forward. And the coach was more my taste with style. I don't kind of, I don't dwell in the past too well. I'm actually a really moving forward kind of person. And the coach was really giving me a, a framework, which spoke to me and made sense. And so I, I went and I worked with this coach and, and that's when I, you know, helped me, you know, see my husband as being the one. I almost missed him because I was, you know, I was making some, we all have these limiting beliefs and you now my husband had never been married before and I was divorced. So I was walking around with the limiting belief. Okay. If a guy hasn't been married by the age of 40, what's wrong with him? You know? And I was discounting them. And I have many clients, many, you know, male clients, female clients in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and even 70s who have never been married. And they're now in relationships. It's wonderful to see. So, you know, circumstances, maybe just the wrong, you know, they didn't put the time and the effort. It just wasn't important. They got bogged down by family stuff. They got bogged down by ill parents, you know. I, my clients come to me from all situations. I'm going to change directions just a little bit here and, and give you an opportunity right now because you came graciously on my show as a guest. I want to, I want to let you kind of promote yourself a little bit more than, than what we already have, but tell everybody, you know, where they could find you, uh, what you have to offer and, you know, any social media links that you may have available. Well, um, I the, my website's motivated to marry. I have a podcast that's a little on the old side, but still good. Some good episodes. I have a blog that's very active. I do a weekly newsletter. So go to my my and sign up. You can get my online dating checklist. I'm actually an online dating expert. Eighty percent of my successfully coupled clients have met through online dating. It's the number one way my clients meet. Um, they meet other ways too, but, but that's what I, I, people come to me for. Um, and, um, I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn mostly and YouTube. I now have relationship coach, Amy shown or relationship coach, Amy. I have a YouTube channel and I am putting up video trainings and things like that. So I have a lot of information, but when you're really ready to do the real work, then, you know, why don't you, I have talk with coach and, you know, I'm a real person. I like to get to know people and, um, you know, if, if this is something you want to put your time and energy and, um, invest in yourself to do coaching, then, then I would love to, um, help whoever's out there that, um, is ready and to step up and do the work. Well, Coach Amy, thank you so much for coming on the show. And oh, thank you, Jonathan. your advice has been, has been so nice to hear. So it, it's good to hear that there's people that will really work with people when, when you know, relationships just aren't what they need to be. Right. And, and, it does, and you know what? And, and it can. I've seen things turn around and I've seen things work out. And it's that's what's really fulfilling and rewarding is to see people move forward with their relationships and live the, the life they've always dreamed of. This episode of Itch Your Break was not a paid advertisement. The thoughts and comments of the hosts or guests are those of the individual speaking and not necessarily that of Itch Your Break or Spark a Vision. Follow Jonathan Mertz on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram at Jonathan Mertz. Follow It's Your Break on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram at It's Your Break. Subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, YouTube, and the iHeartRadio app. This episode of It's Your Break was hosted, announced, engineered, edited, and produced by Jonathan Mertz and was recorded and produced at the Spark of Vision Studios. All sound effects were obtained through Sound Ideas, Pro Sound Effects, iStock, Avid, and Spark of Vision. It's Your Break is owned and distributed by Spark of Vision. Copyright It's Your Break. All rights reserved.